world-class beaches, beautiful rainforests, and rumbling volcanoes, Hawaii is a place that is full of adventure and elegance in every direction. But did you know that the islands are also the origin of a certain type of soda can? Everyone who has visited the islands before is probably aware of that fact, although they might not be aware of the reason why it occurs. Why is there a unique soda can shape seen just in Hawaii? That's what we're going to investigate. Take a conventional soda can and a Hawaiian can. A typical non-Hawaiian can lid has a diameter of 2 and 1 8 inches, or a little over 1,000th the size of the golf ball at Epcot. A Hawaiian lid, on the other hand, is enormous. 2 and 3 8 inches, just over 1,000th the diameter of the Epcot golf ball one quarter inch larger than the standard lids. Very likely you've gulped down a Pepsi can at least once in your life. But have you ever thought about the way soda cans are made? To maximize space and withstand pressure, modern soda cans are rounded. Soda cans can contain liquid up to 90 pounds per square inch despite their thin form, in large part because of the concave dome shape on the bottom of the can. The little tab you use to open the drink is certainly something you're accustomed to. The 1970s saw the introduction of this feature as a standard on soda cans. Before that, you would rip the tab off on the open can and throw it away. The most recent tab on Coke cans allows you to open the can without damaging it in any way. Due to this little modification, aluminum soda cans are now considerably more recyclable, reducing waste and pollution. Today's Coke cans include an internal plastic lining in addition to its rounded shape and small tabs. Its lining ensures that the beverage within the can won't react with the aluminum of the can. By preventing the metal from interacting with the liquid, it preserves the crisp, clean flavor of soda that comes from an aluminum can. Now, why are these cans in Hawaii shaped differently? Simply, it's just economics. Up until about 1980, the majority of manufacturers made soda cans with typical neck ridging, which refers to the lines you can see on the neck of the soda cans. This ridging strengthens the can as it expands and contracts, lowering the possibility of the can rupturing under pressure. Although the rigid design has advantages, a more cutthroat market in the 1980s forced most can makers to use less aluminum, which altered the appearance of soda cans. Some producers changed the next design and the can's opening size to reduce the size of the lids. Manufacturers could spend less on aluminum materials by lowering the can's diameter. Prior to the 1980s, soda cans had a 211 measurement, or a diameter of 21116 inches. In the late 1980s, the market started to become increasingly competitive, and all manufacturers, with the exception of one factory, stopped making cans in this manner. The sole canning facility in Hawaii did not change its methods of productions to accommodate the new shape as other canning plants around the nation did in the 1980s. This canning plant thought it would be unnecessary to update their equipment since they already had the capability to produce cans with neck ridges. As a result, they persisted in producing the cans and are currently the only facility left producing them. They now create cans with a 206 measurement, which is a little larger than typical soda cans, now known as the 206 diameter. This upgraded product was first used for carbonated soft drinks and then for beer. As aluminum is valuable in the can industry, the Hawaiian lids, also known as 206ers, briefly replaced the enormous 211 lids as the industry standard. Even while the ridge design had numerous benefits, it required a lot of aluminum which raised the cost of manufacture even as the soda industry became more cutthroat. As a result, producers altered the design of the soda cans by removing the ridges to save money on aluminum. The can's diameters was decreased and it also got a new opening. The diameter of the soda cans before this change was 2 11 16 inches, or the 2 11 measurements. With various modifications throughout the years, the industry standard is now at 202. Cans with ridges were created in order to keep them sturdy and leak-proof under pressure. While cans are being transported from the producer to the distributor, where they would fall or collide and burst, ridges in particular protect the cans. Hawaiian soda cans have lines on the neck region, just below the top, that are rigid. These lines assist in fortifying the can during expansion and contraction, lowering the possibility of pressure-related rupture. Local distributors are not only concerned about the cost, despite the fact that soda cans with ridges are more expensive than standard soda cans. This is so they can support their local economy and cut down on shipping costs. The Hawaiian Manufacturers Among the Hawaiian islands used for bottling include Molokai, Oahu, Kauai, the Big Islands, and other islands. Hawaii is the only state to create these rigid soda cans because the Hawaii facility continues to make them today. 
These cans have a 206 measurement, which is slightly larger than conventional soda cans to maintain consistency with local distributors. The 206 can is also used in Hawaii for soda, juice, and other canned drinks. Due to the limited distribution region, they can afford to utilize the more expensive cans. Kapolei on the island of Oahu is home to Hawaii's only can-making operation. Owning it is the Colorado Baseball Company. Although it is one of the company's smaller operations at 140,000 square feet, it produces around 1 million cans of soda juice and beer daily. The local distributors in Hawaii get the more than 300 million cans they make each year. Although the island soft drink wholesalers import and utilize conventional cans, the rigid cans are an island standard and are the most common. Although Hawaii imports smooth neck soda cans from the mainland, it's typical to get cans with neck ridging when buying drinks there. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Ido N, Hawaiian Sun, and Maui Brewing Company are the five beverage distributors in Hawaii that employ the Kapolei plan for distribution. You'll be able to identify its sources the next time you notice neck ridging on one of these cans. Let's look up how these cans are produced. Aluminum soda can production involves a lot of processes, but the ball plant in Kapolei has the procedure down to a science, producing over 300 million cans of beverages annually. Starting with, the workers at the Kapolei facility feed aluminum sheet coil rolls into presses that make flat cups. Up to 345,000 flat can per sheet coil can be produced. A different press receives the flat cups and shapes them into the cylinder form of a soda can. To prevent the metal from fracturing, each can is run twice through the press. The container is put through a washer after the second cycle of processing to get any oils and coolants out of it. The can is then colored using plates after passing through both sets of presses. After that, an oven is used to dry out the paint and eliminate any tacky residue. To complete the baking of the can's contents and outside, it is placed in a second oven. The final phase involves the can's neck being given ridges. Workers arrange completed cans on pallets. Part of the cans will then go through an internal examination to guarantee the quality of each batch. The distributors fill the cans with their beverages and put the lids on them after they get them from the manufacturing facility. The cans are ready. The weight gain. The rest of the world didn't stop at the 206 lid since humankind's hunger knows no limitation. The lids were reduced further until they were nearly minuscule 202 size, which is what the majority of us now enjoy. Hawaii, though, never got the memo. Why? It's economics once again. In addition to the psychological effects of gulping down Diet Coke like it's air, economists refer to the canned beverage sector as one that promotes weight gain. The term weight gaining in this context refers to the product's increased weight as it transitions from raw ingredients to, well, product, which also means that the soda is produced and packed. Its transportation costs increase. Carbonated water makes up to 94% of the soda can's volume. Manufacturing and bottling soda products are done by soda companies very near to the place of sale in order to reduce transportation expenses. Hence, your Coke, wherever you purchase it, probably didn't travel that far. Hawaii, therefore, bottles its soda locally, as do the majority of other places. Nonetheless, due to the isolation, businesses also use cans made locally to reduce transportation costs. So, there you have it. Unlike to the mainland, Hawaii chose to keep its beer cans original design. As a result, a few distributors chose to keep making the 206 for locally sold goods and appear differently than they do elsewhere in the United States. It's just one of the many things that make Hawaii special, and we wouldn't have it any other way. Next time you visit Hawaii, bust up that huge lid and enjoy the extra aluminum. The hazy, passable flavor of hops, as interesting as it is, can't be enjoyed in any greater way than this.